Hello, good to have you join us on the segment of Edo Decide Studios on the, the network service of the NTA. Voting by the records is concluded and coalition is in progress by the records. Just a recap, Edo Decide, Edo State Best people are deciding today over 2 million voters across 2,627 polling units at 208 voting points. At the elections, we have political, 14 political parties, 14 governorship candidates, 12 male, 2 female candidates, and none is a person with disability. And uh, by the records also, we have a total of 59 accredited observers, 53 national and uh, 6 foreign observers. Well, I do decide to do, I will tell you on the network service that we will sustain the transmission until Edo people decide who becomes their next governor for the next four years. And uh, just for updates, I uh, have joining me the Nick Dazang, Director of Voter Education and Publicity. Good to have you join us on the studio again. Thank you for having me. Mike Utaha, Utaha, Utaha Public Affairs Analyst and Legal Practitioner. Good to have you join us. Thank you, Mimi. Good to see you again. And uh, we'll be having other guests join us from other studios. But for now, just for to begin the update, the update shows that sorting and counting of votes started on schedule time in Ulua Primary School, one of the polling centers in Ego local government area of Edo State. Obehi Otobo reports. The voting has officially ended here in Oluwa Primary School in Ego local government area. And now the election has entered the last stage, which is the stage of sorting and counting of votes. Can I call? The voting has been concluded. They are in county stage now, and the county is moving all very well without a problem. Any minutes from now, they would have concluded the Quite gratifying that the county is moving on very well, and I'm happy to have the INEC man joining us from the situation room. And what we'll be asking him now is, what is it like? And I want to link that to this much talked about INEC online portal, which is supposed to be active now. So the question is, is it active now? Can people see the counting and the collation real time? Yes, it is. Um, all you need to do is uh, to log into this portal using www.anecresource.com. And you are there. And um, it, it will ask you one or two questions which you will respond. And it will take you uh, to view uh, the results at the polling units where the, the elections have been conducted as we have just seen. Um, uh, thankfully, most of the polling units, 2,626 um, plus uh, 408 um, voting points, uh, most of them closed at 2.30. In fact, um, we received uh, many reports that the elections were concluded at the level of the polling units by that time. Of course, uh, there were areas where the conduct of the election started a bit late um, due to one or two challenges. And uh, for example, uh, in Oreo one local government, we had sporadic uh, gunshots in six polling units, but um, the, the security agencies uh, immediately intervened and the election resumed in those areas. There was also an incident in Oredo, uh, but barring these incidents and um, uh, the, the expected malfunctioning of some of the smart card readers, the election went peacefully uh, and um, it, it, it generally met our expectations uh, at the end of the day. So uh, now that we are at the level of the collation, uh, what we advise uh, citizens of Edo State uh, and uh, Nigerians and in fact members of the international community is to take advantage of this portal to view the results. We deployed this particular portal four weeks ago when we conducted the Nasarawa State House of Assembly election. At that time, um, about 1,000 people 
uh, accessed the portal and viewed the results uh, as they were being uh, entered, I mean, after they had been entered into from EC8A. And um, uh, by this time, we expect that in most of these polling units, where the votes would have been sorted out and counted and entered into the result sheets, the same, it is the same result sheet, the form EC8A, that is uploaded. And then, you know, uh, it, 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 through that portal, you can now view it. The okay, good thing then also... Quickly before we go to Benin right now, yes. just to ask. Yes. We know very well that by now, all kinds of uh, results are on the streets. Are these results authentic? They cannot be. Uh, the only results that are authentic are the ones you view using that portal. And the results that we gave to polling agents and security agencies are the polling units. And the results which we entered from, from EC8 uh, into from 60E, which are also pasted at the polling units. Okay, let me just hold you. They will continue from where you stopped. Okay. Because it's a huge deployment by the NTA. And as we, we, we know now, traffic and attention is built building up towards the, the coalition center at INEC and NT is already there and I'm told Nambi is already there. Let him give us an update of what the situation is at INEC coalition center. Nambi, what's the update where you are right now? Uh, I mean, in, in, indeed, like, like you said, um, activities are gradually shifting to the state coalition center, uh, which is here at the Heineck um, state headquarters. It, it's raining cats and dogs, I mean, as a matter of fact. I am, well, 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 I'm just at the edge of the media center, but in spite of that, you'd notice that I'm getting drenched, as a matter of fact. But, I mean, like, we, like I did say, um, activities are gradually shifting in this way and we're heading into yet another crucial very quite crucial well um, aspect of today's exercise and um, we do know from the information gathered from our reporters on the ground that um, coalition sorting and coalition have um, begun in NS in most local government um, coalition centers across the state well we do expect that when um, that finishes at that phase um, these um, co collations will begin to make their, their way towards the state collation center where the final collation is expected to happen. Oh, I mean, if I would just um, move away a bit from the camera, and if you look this way, you would notice that um, media stations, um, our sister media stations are already making their way here to the state collation center, uh, signaling the meaning that um, activities are gradually coming this way. But of course, like we know, um, the result, or rather, uh, the, the build-up will culminate here where a result would eventually be announced, Domini. You were in Benin in 2016 where the last elections held. Then and now, given meeting up with timelines, would you say maybe in a matter of two, three hours, they will begin coalition at the, at the, at the annex center? We were, we were here four years ago in um, 2016, but I mean, I cannot begin to speculate. I mean, the situations are different. It's still the same number of local government areas, I know, yes, but I, I cannot begin to speculate on when exactly um, results may begin to come in to the state um, coalition center. But we do know from INEC that um, the exercise has been quite progressive. We've also heard that um, results are coming in. Um, I think we should probably wait for INEC to tell us more and brief us on the progress, Omini. What do you make of the rain falling shortly after the conclusion of elections? Is it uh, showers, of, uh, uh, showers of blessings after the tensions, the showers of blessings? What do you make of it? <laughs> well, uh, Omini, uh, indeed. To, I've had to talk to a couple of um, persons around, I mean, residents of Bini, uh, indigenous and natives, and I mean, the rain is quite significant to some, while for others, it's, it's actually a mixed grill, Omini. I mean, some would, um, some have interpreted it to be showers of blessings, some have said, yes, it's to cool the tension, some have said, well, uh, Bini, it's all it rains during the raining season, so I mean, for, for it, it depends on who you're talking into as a matter of fact and their interpretation to to the rains i mean uh, different strokes for different folks so many
So how are the viewers are feeling at home? Everybody is itchy to know where to head. So just uh, prospecting, if I say prospect, uh, what would the viewers be expecting from the NT in terms of minute by minute, second by second, and up to the last minute declaration of results? Any dull moments? Well, but I mean, that's, that's, that's quite easy for me to say because I've uh, been on these for weeks. We have had the opportunity to, to keep um, the viewer abreast of happenings in Bini. Actually, for months, we have promised extensive coverage, and I dare say we have delivered. I mean, we do not intend to give up now. We are already on ground, even before officials and um, adult, um, um, adult staff of INEC are, um, are here. We are on ground. We have set up shop. We have uh, two web studios here. We're reaching you via broadband. We have a studio in INEC that will open up very, very, in fact, in a matter of minutes, the studio should be up and running. So, I mean, I can assure the viewer that you will get step-by-step -step announcements of the result as they come in from local government to local government until the final result is announced, Domini. Thank you so much. And if I let you go, what is the state of affairs of our crew across all the 208 voting points and 2,627 polling units? Are we good and fine? One of your guests actually alluded to the fact that indeed there were pockets of um, incidents. I mean, yes, we would agree with that because we also, uh, as a matter of fact, one of our one of our crew um, somewhere in the hinterland were manhandled and uh, they were harassed uh, and pushed around. So there were quite a few pockets of um, um, violent incidents. Um, uh, but of course, like we know, the police was quick to respond to some of these issues. But all in all, and that again has been alluded to by one of the guests there in the studio. It's been generally peaceful. It's been, it's been very peaceful, I dare say. And you know, in, in the build up to today's exercise, there were fears, there were worries. A lot of people were quite tense. I mean, not certain of what the outlook would be. But I mean, by midday, we had a sense of the direction. We knew for sure that people could come out to participate in the votes. We knew that people were eager to be part of the exercise. We actually saw an impressive turnout in most of the places where I visited. I mean, in relative terms to the number of registered voters, we know that about 75, between 75 to 78 uh, percentage of registered voters, are ex I mean, were built to participate in this exercise. We do not have the final figures yet, but I mean, from what we have seen, I mean, I, I think it's, um, it's a peaceful, it's a calm exercise so far, Omini. Before I let you go, please, quickly, what is your observation regarding the observer status? By the records we hear, there are 53 national observers across various groups and uh, six foreign observer groups across various uh, platforms. From your own observation, what was it like? Ba it's wise now you have said before I let you go. I'm literally, I'm practically drenched here yeah, because I'm just in the rain. But I'll, I'll answer you very quickly. And if you, I mean, there are a couple of observers that we met in the field. We we spoke to them. They, they were. I, I, I would not um, make submissions for them now because we do expect that um, preliminary results or rather pre a preliminary assessment of the exercise will be coming in from some of these um, groups and their personnel quite soon. In fact, any time from now, we expect the report from Yaga Africa, the, their personnel on the ground. I mean, across the 18 uh, local government areas of the state, we have some other groups as well who deployed them um, monitoring officers as well. We met some of them on the field. We got their, we, we, we interviewed a couple of them and they, they made statements uh, alluding to the fact that the exercise has been peaceful. We will hold on and get um, some of these reports. I think they'll begin to come in from today. Uh, Obini. So much, Namdi. We'll get back to you when you're ready for the coalition. Thank you so much. Thank you, Obini. Okay. That was uh, Namdi Odipo.
updating us from the INEC collision center where there's a build up. Like I said before, we, we went to him. Attention, traffic, interest is now towards the uh, INEC collision center in Benin City. But INEC says the online portal and one of the other uh, uh, app I'll talk about later is the ZPAD. I'll come to that. But let me go to Utaha. Now, from what you saw, where we are up to now, 2016, Edo governorship election, 2020. Well, uh, let me start by commending various stakeholders who have been part of this process. Just like we're having the conversation with uh, uh, Namdi Odibo, there was palpable apprehension as to the outcome of this election. And from what we have seen so far, we need to commend various stakeholders who have been part of this process. And INEC is one of them. The security agencies, of course, the traditional institution in Edo State, um, the, the, the people of Edo State generally, because everybody has talked about the impressive turnout at this election, in spite of the apprehensions we had, you know, and the tensions that had built up over the weeks and months preceding this election. So I think it is something salutary, it is something we need to take note of. There have been hiccups here and there. I, I, I read a report online where uh, the governor of Edo and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party had complaints about the, the amount of time it took for him to vote and all of that. I mean, basic issues of this nature are to be expected, but we hope that as we move from this off-cycle election to other elections, there will be significant improvement in you know, voting time and all of that. But basically, I think, we need to celebrate what has happened in Edo, even before the election results are, are announced. Okay. We, we let, let, let's speak to the Electoral Act. Now, after the election, uh, you, whether you agree with me or not, tensions during the election is just like in the football match until the, de the result is declared, the weekly winner declared, yes. tensions will be building up, mm -hmm. although it started, started dying down, but it has its own degree. Mm -hmm. now. What attitude should the electorate be exhibiting at this time? I think we should continue with what we have seen already. You know, um, the people of Edo State have come out in their numbers to decide. They have decided already because what is happening now is just the sorting, collation and counting and all of that. So the people have decided already. And I think uh, if the process goes as we have seen, it is credible enough, uh, people should accept the outcome of this election. and go home feeling satisfied that they have participated in the democratic process as far as Edo is concerned. You know, uh, there will be lessons to be learned. Uh, I know INEC will have a post-mortem where they will, of course, learn lessons from this off-cycle election and feed it back into the process of conducting elections in um, on those states and then subsequently in, in 2023. Okay. Well, if you're just joining us, it's Edo Decide, as you can see. INEC says you don't need to be to rely on social media for the results. <laughs> just go on to the INEC online portal, which I will allow Dazan to give an update about. Then after that, you tell us what is it, this mystery about Z part. Okay, um, let but me just read through the online portal because okay. yeah, speak, yeah, so many results. Are even without your prompting, media. I will do that because I want as many people as possible to log into it. You log into the portal using www.anecresults, results that's s at the end, dot com, and then you can view the outcome in the polling units where results. Uh, the conduct of the elections have concluded and results have been entered into uh, from EC8. Actually, what you are going to view is that results sheet, the EC8A. It is what is being uploaded onto the portal. And all the results in all the polling units are going to be uploaded uh, on that portal. And, and what we have done is um, like I mentioned earlier on in Nasarawa State, about 1,500 people looked into that state constituency election and viewed the results. But in Edo, considering the size and the interest that the election has generated, we have accommodated, we've made a, uh, uh, allowance for 2 million people to lock in simultaneously without 
any glitches and without clocking the portal. So as many as two million people simultaneously can view it. And we feel that by putting in place this portal, number one, we increase the transparency measures we already have in place. And we also reduce the distrust the, 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 the Nigerians have uh, for the election management body. I recall that um, since 2011, what we have done is to also write out the result in that from ECA that is normally turned and given to agents of the political parties and candidates and other um, stakeholders like the security agencies and uh, observers. And then it is entered into form 60E. It's a poster form, very big, and, and it is pasted at the wall at that particular polling unit. Uh, the idea is any voter who is interested can view it and know the outcome of uh, the, the result in that polling unit where he has voted. And we expect that any serious political party or candidate, you know, should have access to the results through the polling agents. Because each time we enter these results into from e, uh, um, EC8A, the same result is torn and given to them for, for, for safekeeping. Mm -hmm. And they can always deploy it in court if, for example, the final results do not reflect uh, what is at the polling unit. And we expect that in the, the stages leading up to uh, the final collation, uh, where the, 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 the return will be made, we expect that any candidate what is sold would also have agents representing him at the registration area centers. Okay. That is the, the, the wards. And in Edo State, we have 192 wards. We expect that any candidate who is serious about the conduct of this election and who uh, wants the sanctity of these results to be kept should ask his agent to be at that uh, rack uh, center uh, to... to protect his interests. By the same token, we expect that he will nominate some other agents or agents to represent him at the local government collection center. Because it is at the local government collection center that they will depart to the state collection center where all the results will be put together and then a return is finally made. So um, the process is so transparent that uh, people don't need to go and relay um, our staff on the road. Uh, because if someone has viewed the result at the polling unit level, I mean, what alteration or, or, or change can you visit on it? You can't. Okay. And, 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 so, and, and the, 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 our guidelines allow you to have someone to represent you, to protect your interests, okay. to have access to this tier off. And, you know, uh, we, we give the same tier off at the polling unit, we give it at the RA, we give it at the local government okay. and at the state level. So when you put them together, if, if, if you have reservations about what has happened, you can deploy them in, 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 in a court case. Okay. And that's what we've been asking political parties to do, okay. rather than relaying innocent staff on the road and, okay. and uh, visiting mayhem on them. That's the way to go. Okay. And uh, at the end of the day, if we continue to do that, our elections will be clean. Because uh, until we introduced this resource portal, there have been issues with the collection centers. People go and attack them. And we f some of us find it ridiculous that you have access to this result. Why are you attacking the centers? Oh. And it's the same results that you are giving at the polling unit level, at the registration area level, that will okay. go to the local government level let, let and to it, the state level. Let me hold it there for now. I, I understand... Uh, our guest, our other guest, uh, Ibrahim Modibo, has joined us. Ibrahim Modibo is the public affairs analyst. Ibrahim, good to see you on Edo Decides. We had before election, and today is election. Just after Kogi is Edo State election. Coming from what happened Kogi and what is happening now in Edo, how do you just oppose them? Um, thank you very much once again I mean, for this invitation to be on this program of great importance. I have been following with keen interest the performance of NTA, especially this coverage is fantastic. It's really wonderful. We've been getting 
trying to a fault, so to say, analysis of everything that is happening in Edo. And I'm very pleased, very happy to associate myself with this program and also the government of President Muhammad Buhari. Because when he came in, he made some promises of which opening the political space for mass participation and also entrenchment of democracy through the ballot box rather than the barrel of the gun. I am so happy with that, what I've seen so far. I must commend the uh, INEC, all the organs of INEC from the chairman to the lowest person in the office, and also the security agencies for this wonderful performance. And honestly and sincerely, I must say that we are on the route to a viable and vibrant democratic culture, a culture that will institute the sanctity of the ballot box. We've seen with the way and manner the security agencies and also INEC has been able to conduct itself, it has shown to the world that we can do it. We have seen transparency, we've seen credibility in these elections. We've also seen that the issue of snatching of ballot boxes or using Fox could be checkmated. Unlike what has happened in Kogi, for best reasons which I don't know, I feel very sad, or I felt sad when I got reports from Kogi talking about snatch of ballot boxes, uh, having hoodlums and what have you. But in today's election in uh, Edo, so far what I've seen, it has shown that INEC, if it says it will, it will. And honestly and sincerely, the way and manner of the conduct of these elections, I think by 2023, we're on a major roadmap to electoral process that will be seen as transparent, very credible, and also electoral process that will be anchored on the rule of law. Electoral process that will be anchored on the major tenets of democracy. I strongly believe that Nigeria as a country is moving forward. And I just hope and pray that what has happened so far that I've seen, which seems from all indications very transparent, very credible, and peaceful, I must thank also the Oba of Benin and also major stakeholders that have been able to bring all the major contestants on, ta on the table to sign peace accord. And this has worked. I just hope and pray that we move from point A to point B, from point B to point C. I pray at the end of the day. Whatever is a stumbling block, the Almighty God will turn into major stepping stones for us to achieve a viable and vibrant democratic culture through the ballot, of bo ballot box. So I pray. Ibrahim, still on you. Uh, imagine if INEC put in place all the deployments and uh, by today no, no electorate came out to vote. What I mean here is if you commended INEC, do the electorate in Edo State also deserve commendation? Yes. Uh, Umino, honestly, the electorate in Edo State must be commended. Honestly, they have stolen my heart already. The way and manner these electorates have been able to put themselves in order, the way and manner they have listened to the OBA and also major stakeholders in the polity, Unlike the days gone by, if you look at the parameters used in, I mean, before this government came in, in the years gone by, we've seen that the whole electoral processes were militarized, militarized, so, so to say. We've seen, you know, uh, talks coming to overpower security agencies and what have you, snatching ballot boxes, and also bringing in this wururu and magomago into the political space. But in today's election, from what I've seen so far, if I am going to base my judgment from what I've seen so far on the ground and using all the parameters of democratic practice, I strongly believe that we're on a move, we're on a solid and vibrant move towards a viable democratic culture where the ballot would count. INEC has done its best. The people are also going to be commended for being very patriotic, very nationalistic in approach, and also Looking at what they have done so far, I think we've been able to move forward and 
In the days gone by where we had things were moving from sublime to ridiculous, where mediocrity and iniquity ruled, now we have a solid political grace, uh, uh, solid political culture, where we've seen the ballot box counting, where we've seen people going in accordance with the dictates of the electoral process, putting on their masks, creating the political, uh, the, 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 the gap, gap in terms of uh, trying to you know, confront the challenges of COVID-19, I think so far so good. I'm very impressed. I feel that as a Nigerian today, I can hold my head so high to say that, look, Edo, you've done it very well. Okay, Modibo, let me go to Mike. Mike, with the introduction and deployment of technology by INEC, would you be amazed if we we'll see here in the last, uh, the, the final analysis that people destroyed resource sheets, snatched by the ballot, would you be amazed? No, I oh, is it like the, is the culture is entrenched? I, I won't. Um, but it will be really unfortunate if that if that happens. Omini, you know, uh, here in Nigeria, we have had situations where somehow or other, you're sitting down in, in your room and suddenly you start receiving alerts that your account has been tampered with and all of that. It sounds so odd, you know. Uh, if, if someone from Europe or some other part of the world hears that, they'll be like, is this possible? Because anything is possible in Nigeria. So it's entirely possible to have that kind of situation. But I know INEC must have also gone through a rigorous process to adopt the kind of technology that we are now deploying to this election. And I hope that it will be foolproof, or even if it is not foolproof, at least it will make it difficult for those who want to, you know, uh, negatively impact our democratic process. You know, I really want to uh, emphasize the point made by my good friend uh, Modibo the role that the National Peace Committee has played in this election. Okay. Before now, we have seen a National Peace Committee that was much more concerned, I should say. I mean, I know it was about resources and all of that, but we saw their presence at the national level. But in this Edo State election, the, the presence was quite felt, and it does appear to mean that they have also made significant contributions to what we have seen today. Uh, between 8 o'clock when the polls opened, right up to 3 o'clock, I have not received any report of anybody who was killed or any, you know, there were pockets, I mean, there was, there was some violence in one, one polling unit, but we have not reported any loss of life, maybe, maybe later. And for a Nigerian election, I mean, for much more experienced democracies, that's very normal. Mm -hmm. But for an election that is taking place in Nigeria and in Edo State in particular, I mean, this is something that we need to celebrate. So we would like to see more of such activities by the National Peace Committee. I hope they will be present in Ondo, and the people of Ondo will conduct themselves pretty much the same way like the people of Edo have done. And I'm sure it takes a lot to be able to do that, and the stakeholders will be there to provide the enabling environment. Okay, still updating on uh, collation, voters at various wards in Ikoba or Ka came out en masse to vote candidates of their choice and they waited patiently for the sorting and counting of their votes. Eugenia Ndubisi has the update. We concluded here in Western Boys High School in Ipoboha local government area. This award has um, 38 units and uh, people are really, wait the, the voters are waiting patiently for their, co uh, for their votes to be counted. I have with me Mr. Okay, Okay, I have Mr. Michael Wamakaro here with me. Sir, can you tell us what is the situation here? Yes, the election was quite peaceful. We are all voted and we are waiting to get the results because we are told to defend our votes. Uh, the election has been going on well, at least with the presence of heavy security men and women. I think that has helped the election to go smoothly. Free. Ubeku was seven, which uh, uh, comprises of uh, 39 uh, polling units. Um, elections uh, have been concluded and um, counting also is almost concluded. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. He wants to tell us his feeling about the nation. Uh, 
generally the election has been, been very, very peaceful. Oh, very successful. Security overwhelmed. Everywhere was cool and calm. Peacefulness in the area, so we don't have a problem. In Benin, Eugenia and DBC, NTA News. I'm sure before the end of Edo decides, some of the tongue twister names from Edo states will get acquainted with them. Well, quickly, what lessons will Anne draw from Edo to Ondo, given the okay. fact that truly, if the technology deployed plays are like uh, Mike and uh, Modibo has said, will it be uh, maybe uh, a walkover in the Ondo state? Well, we, every election is peculiar. And um, we are not going to take things for granted. We will, learn, we will take the lessons we have learned from this election and factor them in the conduct of the Ondo governorship election and 15 other by-elections that we have scheduled for uh, 31st October uh, 2020. Um, you mentioned the ZPAD, for example, yeah. and I, I, want to, I don't want to shy away from that. Um, we... What we do in INEC as a and policy. Want to know about it. <laughs> yes, as a policy, what we do is that when we want to introduce any new technology, we do a pilot. And we use a small election to do the pilot because you don't deploy a new technology in a big uh, election. It will create its own challenges and generate a lot of controversy. So, as a policy, what we do is that going back to the smart card reader and um, the permanent voter card, if you recall, we first of all tested, we did a pilot uh, in, in, in the six geopolitical zones, and we deliberately chose rural and rustic areas. Even in, in Lagos, we chose what translates into a village in Yoruba, Abule of Onibongo, in Ikeja uh, local government. So the, because then, the, the, those opposed uh, to it, uh, ferociously so, and vehemently so, said that our rural people could not use it. So we deliberately now deployed it in areas that, it, by any parameter, you could consider rural. And the smart card, card reader and permanent voter card were widely embraced to, to the consternation of the naysayers. And by the same token, what we did in Nasara State by election was to deploy the ZPAT. And you know, um, each technology has its shelf life. Your computer, for example, maximum you can use it for four years. That is how the manufacturers design it, because they have to be in business. The smart card, I mean, the, the PVC was also designed to last for 10 years. And the intentment of the commission and working with other agencies was that after 10 years, NIMISI, the National Identity Management Commission, mm. would have come up with the National Identity Card. And then we will now use the National Identity Card so to supplant the Permanent Voter Card. Because the, 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 the Permanent Voter Card uh, does not have the kind of longevity that it's, the, the, the National Identity Card is supposed to have. So going forward, what we wanted to do was to gradually phase out the permanent voter card and supplant or replace it uh, with the national identity card. Unfortunately, the, the gathering of data by NIMISI has not gained the same traction as that of uh, INEC. So as we speak now, INEC has the largest database of any set of Nigerians in the country. So when you look at all this together and the fact that this um, uh, PVCs have antennas embedded in them. And people don't generally keep them well. Some sit on them, they put them in their purses, and the antennae get broken. And that explains why you can see systematically that we're having challenges with the smart card reader reading the PVCs. Okay. That is the, the reason. And that means that you need now to do a revalidation did of that, the registration. That a major challenge during this election? Yes, that explains why you see the malfunctioning, the so-called malfunctioning of the smart well, card reader. That. Now, to bypass, to, to do that, we wanted to supplement that by introducing the ZPAD, who will also, which will also capture your facials and other explanations or information that we captured when we are registering you. Unfortunately, we, by the time we deployed it in Nasara State, it, it became very evident that we needed time 
to perfect it. And given the sensitivity of the election that we conducted today, the kind of interest worldwide it has generated, uh, it, it, it would not be wise to now deploy it. And then you are dealing with COVID-19, you are dealing with um, logistics, you are now dealing with ZPAD. So we now decided to defy it. We have not jettisoned it. We want to perfect it. Once we perfect it, we deploy it seamlessly in other elections. But for now, I mean, for the, today's election, we 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 keep aside the Z part, and that is the reason. But the online portal is active. But the, time as now. we speak, the online portal, uh, INEC Results Portal, can be accessed using www.anecresults.com. Is on our screen? You can yes. See on our screen. In fact, the last time we we deployed it in the National State House of Assembly election. The country director of um, International Federation of uh, Electoral Systems, IFES, you know, when we, we, we did a meeting, we, a virtual meeting, the first thing he told me is, you know, I, I tested that uh, a portal. I thought it was a joke, but it was for real. It worked. And it, it, even... So, so just to douse tension yes. and reassure the candidates, Reassure the electorate. So the, the candidates. The, so the, the candidates, issue is that what I mean is that, for yeah, instance, yes, does it, it now means that if you're in the habit of hijacking ballot boxes, there is no need or, for or, it, or destroying uh, there is result no, sheets. There is it no need. Affect the result in fact, at all. all along since 2011, <laughs> there was no need for anybody to destroy anything, and we we have a perfect way. Even if you destroy certain things of reconstructing them, that is what people don't know. We had an incident in, when I was in FCT, when during the collation, some people caused commotion and took away the, the, uh, the resources. And known to them, you know, the, the police were given a copy and they, they kept custody of that resource sheet. Those chaps didn't know that in addition to that of the police, we had other copies. And then we invited them to a meeting and lo and behold, when the police, you know, brought out their own copy, very neat copy. They, they, they were speechless. <laughs> so, you know, all some of these shenanigans are not necessary. Yeah. We, we, we put our children, the ad hoc staff, in harm's way. Mm -hmm. And you see, we, we need stakeholders need to appreciate that the staff conducting these elections are your children. You need to take care of them. Yeah, yeah. But permit me to use this opportunity to pay tribute to all stakeholders that participated, that took part in this election, particularly the ad hoc staff, they have shown considerable patriotism. The, the, the political parties, in spite of their challenges when we were building up to this process, we need also to salute and encourage them. Uh, we need to encourage, or we need also to appreciate development partners, civil society organizations, the media. You know, the media have shown more than casual interest in the conduct of this election. Yeah. The people of Edo State who, who, who came out in spite of the initial violence that attended the campaigns to come out peacefully uh, to vote. And I want to pay special tribute to General Abdul Salami's National Peace Committee and to the convener of that particular committee. But most especially, I want to pay tribute to the Oba. He gave us more than robust support. He gave us muscular support. And his intervention, you know, has worked magic. And if you like, if you may permit me, let me salute him in the well, traditional way. <laughs> it's okay, we'll, we'll, still, we'll still go to that. Uh, Oba <laughs> we'll So go that to, is the, that yeah. is the, so, so we'll still, we'll still go we, to that. we thank him. kept uh, Mike uh, yeah. and uh, Ibrahim yes. silent for some time. But quickly, you, you're coming from the situation room. Yes. What's the update regarding malpractice as much as you have talked about technology? Yes. Have we recorded any case, maybe destruction of INEC vehicles, INEC materials, no, INEC no, staff? No, we have that in, no in, vehicle in has been destroyed, but like I said, um, in uh, Oreo, our staff were, there were sporadic gunshots earlier in the morning, but the, through the intervention of one of our national commissioners who was there, a retired AVM Moazu uh, retired, and the DPO in charge of that local government, the police immediately intervened, and we resumed election in that place and uh, concluded. So 
Um, we, we also had one case of ballot box snatching, unfortunately. And then, of course, there were some reports. Does that suffice? No, it, it doesn't. Okay. It does not detract from the quality of the election that we have conducted. Okay. So I'm not saying that everything is 100%. Mm -hmm. we, we, we work on that and ensure that subsequently we add more value to the conduct of elections. Okay, thank you so much so far. Well, uh, it's not about Edo decide in Abuja. As soon as our studio in Benin is ready, we'll go to Benin for updates. And I'm sure uh, by the time we'll go to Benin, uh, what uh, Dazang has talked about, uh, ballot box and other uh, malpractices, the police there would have told us whether arrests have been made or how far the investigations are, are going. Also, as soon as INEC is ready, we shall go to Namdi, who will give us updates of the situation there. But quickly, uh, Mike, before I go to Modibo, from what Dazang has said, would you say that as much as the electoral culture in Nigeria is evolving, it has not reached the destination? Is it evolving towards what we're, what we're looking at? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not quite as hopeful as um, Ibrahim Modibo put it earlier. He talked about solid democratic culture. And I'm wondering, uh, if you have an election where you're deploying 31,000 police officers, you have military deployments, you have deployments of practically everybody who is in uniform, then there is a problem, really. Maybe not with those deploying, but... And maybe with the actors, some of the actors. I think our politicians really need to get to a point where we will agree amongst ourselves, I mean politicians, that is, that this should not be a do or die thing. And we have commended stakeholders here, and I think Mr. President needs to be commended also for his statesmanly statement that he made. You know, we have seen situations in the past where elections have been declared at the highest level in this country as do or die situations. But we had a situation, we have a president who, who, who now says, look, let's play by the rules. He is an interested party in this election, but he came out as a statesman and said, let's play by the rules. Respect the laws, respect, cast your votes peacefully and all of that. I think it's, it's commendable also. So the politicians have a critical role to play in moving us from where we are to that solid democratic culture. Well, my my, 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 my concern where I want you to pinch, yes. Ibrahim talked about solid political culture. Oh. Elections is an element of democracy. Absolutely. Right? And yes. I was specific about the electoral culture. Yes. I, it's, it's a deliberate question. It's possible well, that if we have Maybe a solid political culture. Yes. The electoral governance may have some minuses. So I I'm saying, from what INEC has done so far, yes, he has talked about the fact that if you snatch, if you snatch ballot box today, or you destroy results sheet, mm -hmm. it doesn't suffice because the INEC online portal has the main results. So mm -hmm. if you distort the field, what the portal says, will, what will be mm -hmm. taken. But, so but, but given even, that, even will you that... say the electoral culture is evolving towards where we are looking at? <laughs> Again, I mean, I, I'm sorry to say this, Omini, but I'm not as optimistic as, as uh, some other persons are. I mean, there's still room for improvement. And I say this precisely because as much as we're hopeful that things will get better, let us not be overtly optimistic about what we have witnessed in Edo. Okay. There might be a relapse. So my position really is... Those who are involved in the electoral process in Nigeria have to redouble their efforts. And we really need to see this in the next election, which is on the state, you know. And a lot needs to be done. One, the volume of resources that we deploy towards election, whether it is by INEC or it's by security agencies or it's by political parties and all of that, it's something that we really need to reflect upon. Why would someone want to kill another person just to get into office? There must be a reason. And it's because public offices are very attractive. What do we do to reduce the attraction to public offices in such a way that anybody who is aspiring to public office is, a pub is aspiring to service? Okay. and will not want to kill a fellow Nigerian to get into that office. Let's hear what, uh, let's hear what Mod Modibo will say in this <laughs> regard. Modibo, <laughs> you, you talked about uh, okay, an entrenched political culture, but I tried to scratch it a bit to say an electoral culture. Leave, if the uh, political culture is entrenched, it could be we still have minuses 
on the electoral governance. Now, from what INEC has put in place, how far, how well, and what is your take on it? Thank you very much, uh, Omen Ode. Unlike my good friend Mike, that seems to be a bit pessimistic over, especially pessimism, you know, over the processes of getting a vibrant and viable democratic culture or political culture, so to say. I'm highly optimistic. I am an incurable optimist in the sense that, look, elections is just like studying a human being. In social psychology, or better still, in the study of a human being, nobody is perfect. You cannot get 100%. That does not mean, I mean, assuming without necessarily conceding to naysayers, doomsday, you know, uh, perditionists, and also coupon clippers. They have been expressing doubts that this election will be characterized by violence and it as if the whole world is turning upside down. I know people have shamed Nigerians or with this kind of attitude by doing this on the right way. I want to believe, my good friend Mike knows very well, that if you have a son that was coming almost last in the class, if he comes to number 10, do you still carry cane and beat him? You have to encourage him. You have to tell him, look, you are intelligent. I have confidence in you. Build confidence in the person. And honestly, by the time the next class comes in, he might likely come to number two or three. There's nothing impossible. So exactly this is it, how democratic culture is being built. Now, we've been battling INEC left, right, and center. But if INEC has done well, let us commend them. That is the only way by which a normal democratic culture can be built. And Nigerians, honestly and sincerely, I was even afraid. The whole of last night I was thinking, I said, look, how I wish the elections in Edo will come to pass and then we'll see a viable and vibrant electoral process that will produce a governor that's acceptable to Nigerians at, at, at large and the Edo people in particular. And what has happened today? If I were to be among these two gladiators, if I lose, believe me, I will never go to court. I will hold my head so high. I know that it is the dictates of the democratic process. It is the ballot box. Let me hold you there. I'll come back to you quickly. Uh, uh, Nick Dazang, you're busy and uh, you, you are supposed to be going back to the situation. Maybe you, from there you'll be giving us an update of what developments are in Edo State. But mm -hmm. before you leave, mm -hmm. what world will you leave with us before you depart from the studio? Well, um, I will just take off from the tangent, from the trajectory he started, which is that um, democracy itself is working. I know buying from Modibo's angle too. <laughs> uh, well, uh, democracy is work in progress. Okay. Um, even this, the advanced democracies always admit that they, 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 it's, it's, demo, it's, it's work in progress. And what we are, uh, I think it will be premature, preposterous to, to, to celebrate. We, we, we have done well, yes. Uh, but we need to take elections to a level where they become routine, where we don't have to do the kind of deployment that he mentioned, where people don't have to be conscious that uh, an election is taking place, except perhaps when experts, pundits, and uh, members of the election management body are discussing it the way we are doing on television and on radio. Then we would have arrived when elections really become routine and when all of course our processes have been developed in such a way as to 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 take away um the need for someone to snatch a ballot box the need for someone to attack an annex staff the need for someone to to buy votes we need to take it to to surpass once we surpass that level then i think um we 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 can we can shout uh, hooray but for now, we still have a lot of work. And on the part of the commission, we'll be learning lessons and we'll be factoring the lessons in the conduct of subsequent elections. Um, it's the joy of some of us who have very few years in the commission that at least the elections are improving. And we want to live like all good actors when the ovation is very loud.
So we want to see how we can sustain this so that we live on, on a very, very exultant note. You can go to the village when they are holding a meeting and they invite you, you take your place with pride as a former director of INEC. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you so course. much, uh, Nick. Mm -hmm. yes. Are you yes. now saying that uh, the new good actors don't live when the vision is high? <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank somebody. you so much, Nick Daza, director of public uh, voter education <laughs> and publicity of uh, INEC. Thank you we very much. We have to much. allow you go now, yeah. and we believe maybe in a matter of minutes, yeah. before we shut down the studio for today, you will give us perspective from Edo State. Thank you. I appreciate I Thank appreciate. You so much. We're not done yet. We shall be going to Benin as soon as the studio that is ready and also if our team at the Anne Collision Center is ready. But let's go to uh, Modibo before I come back to Mike. Modibo, you heard what Dazang said before leaving us. Where do you go from here? I think uh, Dazang is being shy of telling us the truth on the conduct of these elections. I think he must commend INE for doing a good job, honestly. Honestly, INEC has done well. And I commend the government, just like my friend Mike actually st uh, stated, uh, Mr. President, the current government, for at least laying a solid foundation for transparent and credible electoral process. The issue of this poli uh, poli um, uh, bringing the whole militarization, so to say, of bringing security agencies and what have you, it was because some people have been able to instill fear Right from the one when the campaign started, we see violence manifesting itself. And that instilled real fear into Nigeria. That was why the government, in its wisdom, have decided to deploy the security agents to maintain peace and tranquility, to make sure that lives are safe. You see, democrat democracy or electoral process, so to say, it is not as if you are going to the mosque or you are going to church why you have everybody sitting in peace and we have an imam or a pastor leading the congregation. No, this is politics. It is where the ballot box counts. And people, because of the issue of governance in which the whole system has, to a large extent, been uh, made so robust, that people feel that, look, once I get into power, I have everything. I control the people, control the economy, and whatever I want to do, I do. And that is why there is this keen competition that will lead to violence and what have you. The kind of robust this that has been attached to governance, it is what is causing all this. And therefore, we strongly believe that with elections that are forthcoming, if INEC has been able to set a standard of this magnitude where from the portals you have able, you are able to see them plugging in all the results, I just hope that by 2023, now they've started in, uh, in Nasara State, they did very well. So in Kogi, I mean in, uh, in uh, Edo today, they have improved. And therefore maybe by the time we go to Ondo, honestly, we're going to sing hallelujah. But in the meantime, INEC has done very well. Whoever tells you that INEC has not done very well, the security agents have not done very well, and also the Edo people, I'm very proud of them. Democracy, I strongly believe, as I've said, I'm an incurable optimist. I believe that Nigeria is on the right track of change and that by the grace of God, Nigeria will have a solid democratic culture that will be based on the tenets of democracy the, where the ballot box counts. Omene, over to you. Thank you very much. Well, Mike, <laughs> as we speak, I'm sure the electorate in Ondo State they are watching. Yes. The political actors in Ondo State are watching. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of weeks. It will be the turn of Ondo. Ondo decides. Yeah. So, what will you be telling them? If so far, so well, this is what we are seeing in Edo. Mm -hmm. At least, like you said, they have decided, but we're only waiting for the umpire to do a declaration Precisely. of what it is in terms of total votes, all that invalid votes, all that. What should the people of Ondo State be learning from here? Mm. Uh, it turns out both states are cosmopolitan states with high intellectual content. At some point in the history of this country, I think Ondo State had the highest number of professors that you could think of. And that's an enviable record. And we need to see this reflect in the conduct of the forthcoming election, particularly considering the fact that 
Edo has shown clearly that we can conduct elections, even with palpable apprehension, we can conduct election that is can 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 take 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 it past mark. And it starts with the political class. Uh, the political class, like I said before, must come to the realization that it's about service. It's not about the pecks of office. It's not about the opportunities that office provides and all of that. It's about service. And if the people say this is the person they want in office, then the will of the people should be allowed to prevail. Uh, then it's also about the political parties. We have seen cases where internal democratic processes of political parties have really been trampled you know under 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 the feet you know and this again is something and when i say i'm sounding a bit pessimistic it is because of these building blocks that we are not seeing i mean for goodness sake this is 21 years into the democratic pra practice without any interruption why should we for one moment think in terms of the courts determining who holds office in this country. This is, a, this is something that I expect the political class to think about. Why should we campaign, find those who will con contest elections, go into elections, the people come out like today, it was raining in Edo, some people came out to vote and all of that. And then ultimately we allow the courts to determine who is going to hold office. These are some of the lessons that we must, I mean, these are some of the areas we need to reflect upon. So my message to the people of Edo is they must do the same thing that, it, I mean, Ondo, not Edo, Ondo. They must do the same thing Edo has done, but improve on what Edo has done. And lots of stakeholders are involved. We mentioned the National Peace Committee, we mentioned INEP, we mentioned the traditional institution, we mentioned the religious institutions, you know, the political parties, and virtually all stakeholders must literally be have, have their hands on deck to ensure that we see a replay of Edo in Ondo State. Okay. Bodibu, from what is happening in terms of uh, uh, introduction of technology in the electoral process in Nigeria, if eventually it stabilizes, what message do you have for thugs? Because it appears thuggery in elections is gradually becoming old-fashioned. What message do you have for those who believe that every election they will be hired to go and cause confusion? Do you have a message for them? Thank you, Omne. Uh, the period of uh, thuggery and then the period of thinking as an analog person is gone. Now we're in digital age where technology strives. I strongly believe that Nigeria has come of age. Agreed. We're just about 20, 21 years of this uh, democracy. There might be pitfalls here and there. Look at even America. America has been there having democratic culture or having the, why the ballot box rules for over 200 years. America is, is democratic in the past 200 years. But unfortunately, up to today, there are still problems with democracy. You can see that there are problems of uh, technology there. There are problems here and there associated with uh, 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 trying to find the instrumentality of governance. That is by way of the, uh, the ballot box. So Nigeria is on isolation. Nigeria it's a country that has been guided by reason and also I strongly believe it's a country where people should think more of service to humanity rather than the perks of office. People should think of offering themselves to, for service because governance, it's all about service. Both religious books have stated that by the time we all go home, one thing that is certain, we must be accountable to God. When you are serving, when you've been in governance, what did you do? If you have decided to steal like a rat, put in your mouth, carry in your hands, and then dipping them into the, uh, I mean, the hole, it is your own. But we strongly believe that everybody must be accountable. And accountability is what matters. If you are rendering service, render service by the time you've gone, people will think of you and say, oh, this is Modibo's road. Having done this, or this Modibo Stadium. You see, this is what service entails. It is not all about looting, as we've seen some of these people are doing, some of these people in governance. They just feel that governance is all about looting. 
for once self-aggrandizement. And that is not it. So now the issue of thuggery, going back to it. Folks, the idea of thuggery is being faced out gradually. And I can tell you that as young people dispense your energy, dispense your mentality, dispense your focus towards building a viable democratic culture, a viable Nigerian state, a viable Nigerian uh, a country that is guided by the ballot box. The sanctity of the ballot box must be more pre predominant. The preponderance of Togri must allow for peace, tranquility, and also viable uh, uh, democratic culture. Anything less than that is unacceptable. We believe that with this technology now that INEC has been able to introduce, even if you say you are going to snatch the ballot box, once they've been able to make the entries there, it's gone. You can't do anything about it. So therefore, just don't dispense your, uh, this in your, your, your energy in a fruitless venture, or don't put your life in danger. Because if you go and start snatching ballot box, you know what will happen to you. The law will catch up onto you. That is why today you see police, army, and everything dispensing in Edo. But with this conduct, I just hope and pray that almost every state of this country, wherever we are going to have elections, will have a very formidable electoral process that will be in sync and in tune with modern democratic culture, where the ballot box will be more paramount rather than the barrel of the gun. How many? People. Now, uh, Mike, in the last elections, during the coverage, our team of reporters kept having these repeated complaints, vote buying, mm. vote buying, yes. vote buying. It looks as though as much as, well, maybe we still have pockets of it. I can't establish that for now. Yes. It has been relegated to the background also. We have yes. not heard so much about vote, vote buying. Yes. So should that mean that the electorate is, uh, has moved a step up? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the, 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 we, we can interpret that to mean, yes, <laughs> to use your words, the electorate has moved a step further. But it also can be interpreted to mean INEC has raised the bar a little bit higher. And if you recall, we started witnessing massive or very obvious cases of vote buying in the Anambra election. And it was at a time when INEC had decided, I think INEC had just taken the decision then to use the smart card reader. So at that time, my, my, my uh, um, impression is politicians were beginning to see that, look, with the smart card reader, if we snatched ballot boxes or we falsified results or we introduced violence or whatever, it might not be helpful. So in an environment that is has pervasive poverty let's leave uh, let's leave for falsification of results ballot snatching and all of that and try to like convince people to vote in a particular manner through vote by but like you rightly pointed out that has also reduced tremendously and it's because INEC is constantly racing racing the bar you know, but I totally agree with you. There has been some improvement in terms of political, um, uh, I would say, political understanding of, of the Nigerian people, and they're beginning to ask fundamental questions. Why should we collect peanuts, vote for people who will come in and not deliver on service and all of that? You know, and I would like to see a significant improvement in what we have seen already. And again, to commend INEC, we've seen a pockets of prosecutions here and there of people who were arrested, you know, who engaged in vote buying and all of that. So we need to see more and more of this. And when I say that I am a bit pessimistic, it's not that progress is not being made, but I'm just making the point that we have not gotten there yet. And we need to consistently continue with these efforts that we're making towards getting us to where we aspire to be. You know, my good friend uh, um, Modibo had mentioned the uh, um, electoral system in the United States. And this is 2020, and America has had its experience with democracy for more than 200 years, really. But conversations within the last six weeks or so around the American elections is about whether you could use 
post, the postal service to vote in a manner that ensures the integrity of the vote. Okay. I'm not quite sure if five years ago that conversation had come up, people will have doubts about whether the American election, for instance, will be efficacious. But this conversation is coming on. So it's a constant struggle. This is a country that has experienced over 300 years with, with, with democracy, constitutional democracy. But you still have these teething problems, particularly with the health situation that we have on ground now. So it's a constant struggle, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't let off our guard at all. I would like to see a situation where our democracy, democracy and elect electoral culture would get to the point where kids in a nursery school, for instance, will be conscious enough to elect who they think should be their class prefect. You know, indeed in homes, in homes, we should have elections to determine who is the head of house. <laughs> That's the level I really would like us to see. I'm just joking, but really we would need to be conscious about elections as a credible process of determining who leads us. So whether it's in church, it's in the mosque, it's in the classroom, it's in the market square, it's anywhere, we should have, we should get to the point where we have such trust in the electoral process as a viable pathway to leadership recruitment. Okay. Now that Modibo is right here now, <laughs> uh, if it means fist I'll separate. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my, my very good friend, yeah. we really disagree. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> we really. Well, most times, they say, uh, you, you, you forget the person to talk about. I like uh, Rep just left here to the station room and we'll be getting updates from that end and by the time we we'll go to Benin where our studio is standing by to join us very soon we'll get updates on the developments over there. Coalition is a build up but as we speak, INEC has just told us here just for emphasis that any, any result out there whether by way of news or whatever is fake and you have news flying over right now of the, the result already. Now Let's speak to fake news during elections. <laughs> fake news during elections. You see, by the tenets of our profession, the journalism practice, you'll agree with me that if you look at the social responsibility theory of the Nigerian press or the media. But first, do you agree it's a problem? That it is. That is why I'm trying to build up okay. you know, <laughs> an introductory aspect. By virtue of our professional ethics and etiquette of journalism, social responsibility theory presupposes that for any media man that is practicing this profession, you must have some ingredients that will form news or news background to be credible. One, is there balance? Is there thoroughness? Is there objectivity? Co -objectivity? These are some of the core values that, you know, propels journalism practice to greater heights. What we have now, or some of these guys in social media, whoever has a recorder and maybe has been able to get, you know, a, a handset, he automatically becomes a journalist. That is why we say this, pra this practice is in danger. Journalism is in danger because fake news presupposes that it is fake and anything that is fake it is not credible. There is no objectivity, there is no thoroughness, then there is no balance, then credibility comes to question. Therefore, consequently, what we need to look at is all these news are flying around. INEC, right from day one, has cautioned against people sending out news or stories online based on their own figments, some, some of them based on their own figments on imagination. Because some of these guys are political. They dance to the whims and caprices of the political class. Once they have an interested party, they go out, churn out some of these figures that are incredible. Don't be, I mean, if you look at the distance, you might find one of these portals carrying figures that even overweighs the actual figure that has been uh, uh, brought out by INEC, just for safety reasons, and also in order to create confusion. Therefore, the most credible portals 
are the electronic media, especially the radio and television, since they are, by the rules and guidelines of NBC, not supposed to announce this rule until there is confirmation. Mm -hmm. By the umpire. By the umpire. Therefore, anything short of that is fake news. If you start tuning out figures, that are incredible figures that are not even there, that is what propels this danger that we are seeing today. If you look at the way fake news have been going around, that is why today you see military people, police, civil defense, everybody has been mobilized to Edo because of fake news. Because most of these news items that have been coming out from Edo as a build up to the electoral process, which we saw today, has been motivated by this fake news. You see people say, hey, this thing is happening here, this one is being killed. We have to look at the issue of fake news. The issue of fake news is central to the tenets of journalism practice. That's why when I came first, I said, look, I must commend NTA. I must commend almost all I mean, the television houses that are covering and the radio houses that are covering this election. They've done very well because we've been seeing pictures being matched with words. Mm. But under the guidance of some of my professional colleagues, quote and unquote, they will just turn out whatever. You don't see pictures, but you only see figures. And these figures can be manufactured under a tree. Somebody will sit down under a tree and start writing. Then look, PDP take this allocation. APC take this allocation. Mm. WPC take this allocation. Mm. So that is where we're having problems. Okay. Mm. If you're interested in this, uh, we used to hear some development organization talk about follow the projects, follow the money. In this case, Follow, follow the, the results. <laughs> and in following the results, just on our screen, you see the INEC portal. INEC says that portal is on real time now. Whatever you see there is what is happening in the Edo State. Anything outside that portal by INEC instruction is deemed fake. So, so be guided and don't follow sensationalism, please. Thank you so much. And uh, proceeding further, yeah. the INEC man who left us south mentioned pockets of this year, right, but yeah. it was not as full-blown as yes. we had in previous elections. That's true. Uh, but, but just before I weigh in on that, okay. um, you know, there is talk about who the 21st century illiterate is. It is not the person who has not gone to school, no. The 21st century illiterate is the person who is not in tune with real-time technology. And we cannot have a conversation around the whole question of fake news without the role that technology plays in aiding, in aiding this, this, this unfortunate practice. Um, there is a way in which you can read some news on social media, particularly on Facebook or on Twitter, but you can have a way of confirming what you have read. I'll tell you something very interesting. Just before I came in here, there was a, a, a picture on, on Facebook indicating that the immediate past chairman of APC voted in favor of the PDP governor. And there was a picture there with a ballot paper indicating that he had voted for PDP. This is clearly fake news. You know, all I did was <laughs> to check NTA, to check channels, to check punch. And once I got to punch and I didn't see anything of the sort, I just knew this is something you have to ignore. So I am one of those who feel that the constitutional imperative for freedom of expression should be there. But at the same time, people who have taken up the responsibility to be, to be press men or, and women must also be guided by the provisions of Section 22. We constantly talk about Section 22 when we have this conversation, about the responsibility of the media to ensure accountability. That is the exact word that is used in the Constitution. And I would like to use this opportunity to appeal to people who are active on social media to ensure that there is accountability in what they do. Now technology has made us, everybody is their own editor, you own your own media house, you're your reporter, you're your publisher, you're your everything. There's no level of control, you know. So that's at that level. But then we also have to trust but verify. Trust what is coming out on social media or any other source, but verify what <laughs> you have said. Yeah, you talked about pockets of violence here and there. And 
Not uh, as loud as we No, heard. certainly not. And we had, everybody was going into this election with a lot of fear, you know. And again, I go back to the point I was making earlier. We have not gotten there. If what we have seen today is as a result of the heavy deployment that we have had, why should it be so? Why should we conduct ourselves as people who are active within the 21st century only because we have seen people in uniform totting guns all over the place? You know, Dazang made the point about the fact that our aspiration is to get to a point where elections will be so normal that an election is going on somewhere, you don't need to shut down the economy, you don't need to close down shops, you don't need to restrict movement, it will be so seamless. That's our aspiration. That's where we desire to be. Why should why should we have peaceful conduct of elections in Edo simply because the National Peace Committee had to go there and to join forces with the Oba of Benin to say, please conduct yourselves as responsible people. You know, so we need an internal process that will first refine our power aspirations. What drives you to aspire for power? Is it service? Is it the perks of office? Is it the protection you're going to receive around the law and all of that? So we need to reflect on this. And once we're able to answer these questions, we will not see the kind of cutthroat competition that we see around power in this country. Okay. Vodibo, let's uh, look at uh, the angle of data. Data is core to elections. And uh, we heard the... Uh, Dazan, before he left us, the INEC man talked about the fact that today the only the majorly organized data is by INEC. We have National Population Commission, we have the Nigerian Communications Communications Commission, uh, we NIMC. have the NIMSI. Mm. So when can we have it harmonized to make election governance a lot easier, also data collection a lot easier? We're in the process. I strongly believe that uh, as a country we are in the process, as a third world country, I'll say, we are in the process of harmonizing all these things. Because one, for very obvious reasons, we've seen that from the down of history, we've not been able to capture data. There is no country in this world that could undertake any research without a viable and vibrant methodology and methodology involves data. So data is very paramount and is of great significance. Therefore, from down of history, we've evolved as a country under colonialism without having that input from the colonial masters that will capture our date of birth, the time that we we'll die, what we're doing. Therefore, it is only now, after, well, now we're six years. And up to now, we've not been able to capture every Nigerian, especially in terms of his date of birth, the, the scholarship and learning that he has gone through, and also the time we die. There is no record. And therefore, any country that needs to progress must have record. Yeah. Record is very significant, is of paramount importance. Yes. And therefore, central to this issue is this NIMSI they've been able to introduce Based on my, my level of thinking, I strongly believe that there is real need to harmonize this. Because if you look at the banks now, the banking system in Nigeria, mm -hmm. using your ATM card, mm -hmm. it has captured a lot of your data. Yeah, sure. In some other countries, the ATM card is, can also, I mean, uh, your NIMSI card can also be part of your ATM. Sure. It can be everything, data bank, you can use it as a source of transaction, you know. And it captures everything about you. But in Nigeria, unfortunately, it is only now that we've, uh, we've started, but we've not gone far. The NIMSI is so sluggish. Let me give you an experience. I have done in Yola this NIMSI registration for over 10 years. As I'm talking today, up to today, I've not been able to get it. I only have the, the letter, the, 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 the photocopy. <laughs> the, 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 the photocopy. <coughs> up to today, as I'm talking to you, I've been sending, going there myself. They say, oh, no, it's about being done. This is... Up to today, I've not been able to get my own. But when it comes to banking, I have my uh -huh. this thing. Uh -huh. So there is the need to harmonize all these things so that once and for all, we will be able to checkmate 
Because if you have data, if you have all this, this to put all together, it is from the bedrock of you either voting, going to hospitals, economy, sure. Look at it. even the issue of your blood draw and everything when you have accident, mm -hmm. God forbid. Mm -hmm. But in the event you go to the hospital, if there's any problem, yeah. you'll be able, <laughs> once you slug your, this, your card, they'll be able to get every data about you. Sure. So we must, as a matter of national emergency, this government must, through NIMSI, come up with viable and vibrant you know, uh, level of thinking where we have to have urgent, you know, uh, getting of this, the harmonization of all these things yep. to give us a solid. I had uh, Nick Gazan, my good friend, mm -hmm. telling us that uh, after 10 years or so, your uh, PVC mm -hmm. will expire. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay. <laughs> Why? They talked about their, their working towards that. Anyway, no, uh, no. the International Identity Day just finished a few days ago. Yes. And I remember vividly. Mm -hmm. In 2015, on assumption of office, Mr. President has emphasized on the need for all the identity agencies in Nigeria to harmonize. Mm -hmm. Talking about National Population Commission, yes. Nigeria Communications Commission, yes. uh, INEC itself, and uh, which other one again? NIMSI. Mm -hmm. NIMSI. To harmonize their And even the road anyway, safety. Let's, you know? proceed. Yes. let's proceed. Driver uh, glasses and what have you. Mm -hmm. Mike. Very important before we forget, as much as, much as we are not health experts, but the new normal has taught us to, to, to be health experts. Yeah. What lessons should we draw from a dose election towards Ondo regarding compliance with COVID-19 protocol? Mm. It's extremely difficult. Uh, just before I came into the studio here, I was reading one of the preliminary reports by one of the observation groups, uh, Center LSD. Um, they gave the election some kind of pass mark. But I noticed they gave in an indication that <laughs> social distancing was not observed at all during the election. And in most places, people operated basically without the use of, of the mask. Uh, I think this is something that uh, INEC, uh, the political parties, uh, the stakeholders involved, National Orientation Agency, media houses like you and all of that, we need to step up our game as far as conscientization and you know raising consciousness is concerned. Um, COVID-19 is real. It is still with us. Uh, even if the number of cases that we record every day is reducing, the fact remains that it is still there. We have seen countries where there's some kind of next lockdown or whatever. I mean, it's happening in a few countries here and there. And we don't want to get into that kind of situation because of elections. It is entirely possible for you to maintain social distancing, even while queuing up to have uh, to cast, cast your ballot. But much more fundamentally, there is a way you can go to the polling unit with your mask on your, on your face. And this has to be really emphasized. In fact, it should be made a precondition for you accessing the polling unit because it's very important. We can only, be a, we can only participate or benefit from the dividends of democracy if we're alive. So if in the course of voting you die, what is really the essence, you know? So we must take this very seriously. And I commend Center LSD for specifically pointing this is out. Is it an observer group? Yes, it's an observer group. For this election? Yes, yes. Center okay. LSD. Let's move on. Before now, up to some high platforms, people have thought that voter education was the sole responsibility of uh, political parties. Mm -hmm. But we got uh, uh, sole responsibility of uh, like, Independent yeah. National Electoral Commission. Yeah. But over time, it has been proven that it is responsibility of, responsibility of political parties, mm -hmm. even up to the fact candidates who are very savvy, mm -hmm. elect elections wise, are supposed to be able to educate the electorate. Yes. But moving on, it's an evolving process mm -hmm. that does not have uh, a defined destination. Mm -hmm. So, voter education wise, will you say that? We have rebased? Um, this is a very, this is a very tough question. Tough in the sense that, you see, honestly and sincerely, I strongly believe that uh, voter education should not in any way be consigned to INEC alone. But before I go there, the issue of this COVID-19 
and the electorates. It is not only going to be responsibility of the political, I mean, I strongly believe there is not only the responsibility of the government, but it should be the political parties. If some people can be buying rice or bread, how much will it cost for Buy people masks, to yeah. get mass and distribute to your people mm -hmm. on the election day or Very if you want important. to go and... and Very important. The political party should do that. Yeah. Those contestants should do that. How much is the first mask? Would that not reflect campaigning on elections day? No, no, no. Not on election day. You don't Before. go to hunting <laughs> expedition. You don't carry a, a French dog taking him on the day of hunting expedition. No. You have to start from somewhere. A week or two to elections. Get this into the people. Give them. But without you can, a party logo. No, no, without party logo. Okay, beautiful. You just get this blue or this in uh, face mask, just give them out. But there is a problem. A political party will not want to do a project like that without proving that they did it. No, no, you see, that is why I'm saying that in a normal organized society, we should have the political parties, the political class, taking care of the people. Because what is the essence of you getting into power and your people are dying or will die after elections? Now, Having gone back to this issue of uh, public enlightenment, I strongly believe it's not only I think that should be at the center stage of talking to Nigerians on the virtues and vices of electoral processes. The National Orientation Agency seems to be more bond. I the seems more of a toothless bulldog that always barks but never bites. <laughs> I've not been hearing much, and I don't know why. The Minister of Information, in, the, in his wisdom, should allow National Orientation Agency to just be a harmless uh, this in, uh, at the doorsteps of the ministry. Mm -hmm. There should be the invigoration of that ministry. We need a very viable publicity culture. I know Dr. Garbabar is a very solid, very sound uh, Nigerian that has a lot of potential, he has a lot of things. As it's those steps to prop propagate. But I learned, as a journalist, I learned from a very reliable source. and highly, you know, uh, credible source that the National Orientation Agency is not being funded. They are lacking funds. So how do you operate? How do you move on to make public? Because in those days when we were young, we used to have these vans mm. carrying uh, Majigi, we call them in House of Magic, that is these films. Loudspeakers. Yeah. Loudspeakers and films and everything. You go to villages, you show the villagers films about electoral process. These are the things we should do. Because in a democratic setup, in any democracy must be built based on the convivial and conventional issues that are propping up. Sure. We should not say that because we've done it about 10, 20 years ago, that's enough. No, no, no. Yeah. There are young people now that are coming of age to go into voting. Yeah. Therefore, there's a need for them to be educated. People should be educated on the virtues of democracy. We strongly believe that now the old brigades amongst us, because we are also now falling into that group, <laughs> we, have got, we are gradually being first out. Mm -hmm. And now it is the new uh, the youths that are coming up. Sure, sure. A lot of Nigerian youths now they don't want to go into politics. Mm. They say politics is a dirty game. If it is a dirty game, so you leave it to dirty people. Mm. You, you don't want to play a dirty game. <laughs> people must be educated. The government must, a matter, as a matter of agency, try to fund its media houses, especially the NTA and all these radio houses, fund national orientation agencies very well, fund the political class. This issue of information and dissemination information aggregation and information disposition must be an all-round affair that should encompass everybody. It should not be left in the hands of only INEC because <laughs> INEC has a lot to do. Yeah. And that information management, it is not caught out to, to manage information. INEC is caught out to manage elections. Sure. Therefore, those that are in the forefront of managing information should be given the latitude. Oh. You can't call a carpenter to come and be a medical doctor. Will you use a, a digger and okay. to come and start Let, putting people's proceeds? Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Let me weigh Let, in. Okay. Um, you know, there's, there is, there are rather vertical and horizontal perspectives to this issue of voter education. Okay. And I say vertical and horizontal because there is the parts that we deal with available infrastructure. 
and I think technology has aided information dissemination yeah. now. But what about content? We have had political parties, even in this country, that had clearly identifiable ideology. I was barely 10, 11, 12 when the likes of MPP, NPN, UPN, UPN and all GMPP, of that were PRP. Very <laughs> and if any of these parties was mentioned, even from their <laughs> logos or the messages that were coming from there, you could identify them with a particular thing. Yes, I cover the elections. Good. <laughs> Now, what can you identify with today's political parties? They are basically the same. Same actors moving from one to another just as platforms. It used to be about ideology. Ideology has caved in and we talk about issues now. What is the primary issue that is on the mind of APC, for instance? What's the primary issue that is on the mind of the PDP now? It's difficult to, to say. So it becomes difficult to educate the average Nigerian voter. It's not just to say, come out and vote. What should determine who I vote for? So it starts not even from the political parties. It starts from the candidates that are aspiring to office. What agenda do you have for the people you aspire to represent or the people you aspire to lead? And that agenda will be distilled from the issues that your party holds here or for want of a better word the ideology of your political party so it goes back to the political parties to begin to div to identify themselves very clearly with issues that the average Nigerian can identify with you know so in the US election for instance you hear about foreign policy um, uh, migration um, you know, all kinds of issues that you can identify if, if an average Nigerian, I mean, American voter will, will say, this is what I want to vote for a particular party for. In Nigeria, what's it? You know, so this is the difficulty. And again, I challenge our political parties. I challenge INEC. I challenge various stakeholders, you know, to have a rigorous process that will lead us to, you know, defining what's really is the issue that is uppermost on our minds. It becomes then easier to sell yourself either as a candidate or as a political party sure. to the average Nigerian voter. Sure. Yeah. You were also to respond to uh, voter education, but you decided to veer into is it COVID-19. Oh, I did. I did. No, COVID-19. I did. I did. Uh, the other aspect of it is the political parties. There came a time during the elections, it looks quite competitive. You could see clearly five, ten political parties almost at par. Uh -huh. When you see the result, you see it's so, so, sometimes it is one, one political party down there that hits. But now you just see during elections, just two will stand out clearly. The other one will just go under. Uh -huh. How could we resolve this? Moving on. Uh, let me leave that to two of you. Okay. okay. Is that open I, can, I can start. I okay, mean, go ahead. You know, there is there is a um, a challenge of the kind of we are confronted with the challenge of the kind of political system that we have in place in Nigeria. Our constitution is decidedly federal in nature, but in operating this constitution, we are anything but a federal state. All right. If you want to appoint a high court judge in my home state, Benue, you have to come to Abuja. You have to obtain permission from the National Judicial Council and all of that. If you, if you have to construct a road that is leading from Makudi to Cross River, uh, it is a responsibility of the federal government. Meantime, it passes through your state and it, it is a road. You know, so the kind of federalism we practice really makes issues a bit difficult for us to, to deal with in, in, in this country. And I say this precisely because all politics is local. It is about the local man there, or it's about the local community there and all of that. So when you hear, for instance, in the United States about the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, it's not for for us to believe that there are no other political parties. No, there are. 
If I want a political party that will deal with issues concerning the farmer and the herder, for instance, I should have that political party. You know, and the first step towards doing that would be for us to allow political parties to evolve. This idea that INEC must register you, you must be a party that is recognized by the Electoral Act, the federal legislation and all of that, poses some kind of difficulty. Okay. Some people are not interested in coming to Abuja. They're not interested in the National Assembly. They're not interested in anything that has to do with Abuja. They just are concerned with their local government. Okay. Let me, let me, let, be let, let, let me hold you there. When we come back, we, sh we should be going to Benin now. Here, our student Benin is ready. When we come back, we shall be look looking towards uh, election, the conduct of elections, and early re release of results. But Let's go to Benin now. I can see my colleague there in the studio. What's the update from your end? Hilde? <laughs> Ag Agatha, what's the update from your end? Thank you very much, uh, Mie. We are now in the home stretch. The D-Day is uh, gradually winding down and most important aspect of uh, the electoral process, uh, talking about the people expressing uh, their choice through the ballot uh, is complete. Uh, voting has been concluded in all parts of the state. Now, attention is now shifted to the umpire that's uh, in the INEC uh, to sort, collate what is in the ballot boxes. Well, as attention shifts to INEC, we have also shifted our operational base uh, here to the INEC headquarters here in uh, Duwawa, uh, Benin City, where the action will actually be taking place from now on. Uh, it's been a long day. Favorable weather earlier in the day, though we have a little bit of rain here now. Um, uh, there is also heavy security presence here. Uh, like I said, uh, people have already decided, and what is left is the sorting, collation, and then the final phase, that's declaration of results. But uh, I have here uh, a professor in the University of Benin, immediate past dean, faculty of arts, University of Benin, former orator of the university, uh, Professor Eddie Eragbe. He joins me live now, and he will be sharing his thoughts on the process so far. You're welcome, Prof. Yeah, good always, good, Thank you always good to have you. Thank you. Okay, now, Prof, uh, the much talked about a governorship election, yeah. the day is already gone. The fear of voter apathy is uh, it's falling flat in its face, and expectations of uh, widespread violence is not, um, has not materialized so far. I'm sure you, you went out to vote uh, and you, you, you observed the situation. Uh, what do you make of the process from where we are coming from to where we are now? Um, well, I want to really, first, as a very religious people, thank God for what has transpired today in the world. Um, we won't say that uh, the fears were unfounded in terms of uh, whether there was going to be violence or not, because uh, just before we got to this location, a lot of interventions had to come up that had to doubt the tension that was building up as far as the state was concerned. Today, as it has come down, uh, which I must say is almost characteristic of a low state, uh, it has almost been violence free. There have been hiccups here and there. Reports have reached different locations indicating that they were setting attempts or attempts actually materialized where they were snatching of buses and things of that nature, but not at the level of blood letting at all. And for this, we really must thank all the key actors that want to say, look, it is not worth stealing the blood at all. Let us go and express ourselves and let us know eventually who the people of Edo State want to take charge of their affairs for the next four years. So, as you rightly mentioned, I was privileged to again participate in the electoral system. This time again as a voter, I voted in the University of Benin, uh, which has uh, under Obia Northeast local government area. Everywhere was peaceful. And before I left home this evening, I got calls that the results have been released. And true to what I think has been saying also, results have been mounted on the portal from different parts of the state. And so what we are waiting for is coalition, as you have mentioned, because the rains that came immediately at the end of the elections, mm. because the elections were project uh, programmed to end at 2.30. 30. But about 3.30, the heavens opened up. And as we speak now, the rains are gradually dying down. Mm. But we know it's going to cause a little bit of, of hitches in terms of movement from different parts of the state. Okay. But uh, by and large, we must say that uh, those people, again, are proving to say that we, in quote, are not a valid people. Uh, uh, and we must 
time the other of the need. Yeah. Our traditional rulers, religious people, and of course, even the national body, that is people being led by our president, Abu Bakr, and all, for all their interventions. And Mr. President himself, who showed great commitment because of the security presence that we have, and we believe that must have contributed to the peace. Uh, that has been witnessed during today's election. Okay, uh, I was just going to say with all of what we have seen all through today, yes. what the hue and cry was all about in the first place. No, uh, as I said, they were not unfounded because the posture was really one of desperation. Uh, if you look at the key actors in this, statesmen that we have made, careers, things of that nature, and then some actions that actually took place because it's not uh, against the historical records of what happened in these elections that during the campaign there were actually some violent actions, shootings took place at all. But luckily, so far, we've not had reports of deaths being uh, recorded. So what I'm saying is that there was really justification for the palpable fear at that time. But the intervention, we must not underestimate what happened there. The other opinion, Israel Majesty, calling our uh, leaders together and then listening to them and all other interventions that took place and the disposition of the contestants themselves, we should not take that for granted. Because just like it happened with the former president, good luck, Billy Jonathan, when he said in 2015 that his, uh, no, no life will be lost because of his ambition at all, we saw that also coming from the current governor of our state and then the up key opponents, we are saying, not that there were no other groups as it were, they were all showing the disposition to peaceful election. So what I'm saying is that there was fear. And of course, uh, one other angle we look at sometimes, because it has some ambivalent implications. The presence of the military, the presence of the uh, security forces, also must have contributed to people not feeling secure. Because the movement that we saw was that nothing was going to happen. And as I have said, we must not be to thank God that uh, things have turned out this way uh, so far. Uh, OK, you agree with me that all before we uh, continue discussions with you, yeah. let's just take this uh, situation report, security situation report from Austin Edemodu. He has been following the security situation in the state. Austin, it's over to you. I must tell you that all seriousness has been adopted by security agents in terms of how far they have deployed personnel to this assignment, the Edo state uh, gubernatorial election. Uh, 31,000 police officers have been deployed for this assignment. We have eight commissioners of police and one DIG who have been ensuring that uh, security of lives and property of Edo people are in check. And of course, uh, the police command has actually been carrying out surveillance activities. A uh, few hours ago, we saw a helicopter a surveillance within the city of uh, Edo State and uh, the length and breadth of uh, Edo State as it were. And uh, the police command is not giving anything to chance. Uh, at the INEC headquarters here in Benin, uh, the DIG alongside with his uh, other police security uh, sister agencies visited the INEC office uh, to ascertain the level of uh, activities going on there. And from what we saw, we could see that the uh, police are uh, well prepared for this assignment. They have the K-9 dogs uh, stationed there apart from other security men that we are on duty. From there, the Commissioner of Police uh, alongside the DIG also uh, moved to some other polling units within the Edo uh, city uh, to ascertain the level of uh, activities in terms of security in those areas. And when asked about uh, how he assessed the security situation, judging from the earlier, uh, uh, you know, earlier uh, uh, promises made by the police to ensure a history election. Uh, he did reiterate uh, the police uh, determination to ensure that uh, uh, the lives and property of Edo people are safe and that voters, after casting their ballot, should uh, ensure that they leave the polling units and wait uh, for the results. We are asking that all and sundry should still please ensure that we don't cross the line. When we don't cross the line, we'll have a seamless result. Asking that all members of the electorate should do the needful as we have put in everything in place to ensure that we have a huge free exercise. When asked on the issues of uh, 
pockets of uh, violence uh, in most polling uh, units as reported uh, across the state. Uh, the DIG has this to say. We're on top of the game. There's no action that have not attracted a reaction from us. That's why we have a seamless relationship at our control room. Every issues that have been brought up, minor, minor, minor ones. There are nothing, there are no evil skirmishes. Those people that come, we've been able to resolve it and we have record of all the activities. It is an ongoing exercise. Success shall be achieved by God's grace. By and large, it has been uh, a free and fair exercise on the part of the security agents. I do hope that at the end of the day, the do people will be better off to get a free and fair election results that will be favorable to everyone. It's been Austin Edemodo reporting from Benin City. Thank you so much, Austin, for that uh, security situation in Edo. Uh, we'll be rejoining our Abuja studios shortly uh, to join uh, uh, Ominyode. Sorry if I said Mie Ogidi earlier. You know, when you talk about INEC uh, in NT, uh, Mie already comes to mind, but sorry about the mix up. Uh, Prof, coming back to you. Yeah. People will readily say we yeah, are in a dicey situation, this is a very important moment for us to experience, for the peace we've experienced to continue. Going forward, what, what, what do you think should be done that has not been done so that the peace we've experienced will continue? Um, it is obvious, especially from uh, the experiences we have had before, that there are different stages in this whole process. And one has been concluded now, as you said, the casting of votes and all. And let's also hope that in most of the locations, the counting of the ballots are taking place. What is therefore necessary is that the security apparatus that has been put in place should not let go or let down at all. There should be greater vigilance at this moment because experiences have shown that this is a critical time that people that want to disrupt the process can heighten their plans as it were. Right. So what is called for is greater vigilance at this time. It is definitely yet not Uhuru. It's not yet over. And we must commend the security forces for what they have done so far, just as was mentioned now, all that right. all actions also brought about reaction. Okay, thank Let you. Them know thank you. They thank must you. get ready all right. for anything that can come up. Okay, thank you. Process. Thank you so much, Professor Eddie Eragwe, Professor yes. from the University of Company. Benin. Thank you so much for coming on Edo Decide Studio. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we will now join Omini in Abuja. Thank you so much. Agatao for the update from uh, Benin. Well, from what the DIG said, no action that has not attracted a reaction from the police. I believe it cuts across. Well, we don't have all the time. We are not done yet. We are just taking a long break. And uh, Edo Decide Studios resumes any moment NTA decides to come up when action starts. But for now, we are sure to resume by early morning tomorrow. Meanwhile, let me quickly thank Mike Utaha public affairs analyst and uh, legal practitioner. It does not have been on the studio with My us. Pleasure. Good and, to see uh, you again. And Ibrahim Bodibu. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, the people of Edo have decided it's left for the umpire to declare results and we believe it's a matter of countdown to the results and we shall be seeing what it will look like coming from above 2 million voters, 2,627 polling units, and 208 voting points across 18 local government areas of Edo State. There is a countdown for now. We're going to break and we'll resume as soon as possible. Thanks for being there.